What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to start a new Let's Play. So, we're going to do Felix the Cat on the NES. I am your host, Tim McKernan. And I'm doing this on my NES Mini because this is probably going to be a more than uh, single episode. And there's no password or save function in this game. So, uh, yeah, we want to make sure that we see all of it. And, yeah safe state is the way to do it so hold on let's let's reset that let's get the story in this super critical story Felix the cat ring 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 Felix if you don't want to give me the bag I'll get it from you anyway click so that's the thing that's the stash bag um, Felix carries his uh, bag of weed in there and other things. So, yeah, Felix the cat. Um, late generation 8 bit NES game. Uh, licensed property. I got this game from Funko Land rather randomly. So, I would be a freshman in high school, which would have put me, I don't know, I guess about 97 or so. NES would have been pretty much old news at that point. So I would be playing this PlayStation. I'd probably be getting into some Final Fantasy. 97? No. No, I wouldn't have had a, I wouldn't have had a PlayStation yet. But I would have been definitely big time into the Super Nintendo. I would be playing my Super Nintendo RPGs at this point. Kind of transitioned away from um, platformers, and as I got toward high school, I got into RPGs. So this was not anything I would have necessarily wanted, um, but I'm extremely happy I have it. So, I don't know. I was in f I was a freshman in high school. I can't remember the exact reason why. It just seemed to be the case um, that my father came home one day from work and he had a present for at least me and my two brothers, um, but it could have been for everyone in the family. It was no one's birthday. There was no holiday. It just happened, and um, my father is a very generous, loving man, but he wasn't one to necessarily just give things away, um, so it was a really rare thing. Um, and I can't remember what my brothers got, but my dad knew I liked Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> that, that didn't change. And, um, yeah, he got me this, and it was in a... I remember it very well. It was in a Funko Land cardboard sleeve. So old 8-bit Nintendo games came in these plastic dust um, protectors. And, uh, yeah, it came in a Funko Land one. I will talk about this game in a bit <laughs> because I'm confused about what's going on here. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a nice green one. And I think the price of this game in 97 at Funko Land would have been around ten dollars five ten dollars something like that um and the price of this game has gone way up since then i don't have a complete inbox copy it was a used game i got from funko as mentioned already 50 times but um it's not the price of the game that's most endearing to me about it. it's the fact that my dad just gave this to me um, there was no reason for it. He just thought I would like this, and I do. I didn't play it right away, probably, because, as I mentioned, you know, the Nintendo was kind of blasé in 97. But, um, I did end up playing it, <laughs> and I really thought it was good. I, I thought it was a great little game, great little platformer. Uh, and I remember I used to have to travel around the U.S. a lot for business. Uh, I was working at a company. We had products that I would go around and kind of whore out to people who would install them. And I'd be all over the sunny uh, states of this uh, sunny states of the U.S. Um, because it was a solar electric company. And at that time, 
there would be um, the PlayStation Portable was a big deal. So I had my PlayStation Portable, I had that modified, and I would be playing 8-bit emulators on it a lot. And so I can remember playing this game a lot in my kind of, I was flying out of Detroit, probably to the west coast a bunch. I remember playing this game flying over the Midwest a lot, watching sunrises and sunsets and just... I don't know. This this game has a lot of nostalgia for me, even though I didn't play it when it was really fully relevant. So let's talk about some of the mechanics of this game. Um, Felix is on a quest to find his girlfriend, and I didn't do so good the first level, but the second level I now upgraded Felix to his most powerful ability. So I never watched the cartoon or knew much about what Felix the cat is, but he's got this... Whoa, holy crap, I don't remember him ever doing that. Uh, he's got this magic bag that the evil doctor wants and has held his girlfriend hostage in order to get. And the magic bag can be powered up whenever I get one of those um, hearts. The magic bag gets uh, powered up, so... Felix starts off with just like kind of a punching bag coming out of his uh, little satchel and then it turns into him being able to just do magic um, which is kind of an all every direction attack kind of like a wood shield so to speak from Mega Man and then he gets the car and that does a distance attack straight forward and then finally the final stage is the the tank and tank kind of shoots at an angle, but it does a fair amount of damage. If you look in the upper left hand corner, you'll see the little tank icon. And you see those hearts, and those hearts go away on their own. Uh, you can restore those hearts with milk, and also by getting another heart. And when you have a heart at your maximum level, then you get a one up. Um, if the hearts run out, then you downgrade one level, so I'd have turned from the tank to the car. But yeah, so okay, so here we go. Whoa! Missed it already. So world two, start off with a parasol. And we're in the pyramid area. Okay. Pretty sure it's like every other game. You get a hundred of these little Felix things and you get a one up. But this is a very excellent um, platformer, right? So this must have had one of the later mapper chips for the NES, the one that lets you do vertical. Oh, I think that hit me. Uh, vertical and horizontal scrolling, right? As crazy as that sounds, that was an innovation, um, right? I mean, we talk about 4K 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5 and like, <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, if we were able to go left and right and up and down, holy smokes, that was high technology. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it was iterative. Uh, that's how video games were. So late, ga late generation one had all the mapper chips in it, gave it all the functionality you could expect. So, you know, it I've been told that the big menu bar at the bottom there is order to kind of remove action from the display to increase general frame rate and make sure that you know things don't really behave inappropriately. So I don't know how, much, how true that is. I'm no programmer. I haven't dissected the ROM, but apparently, yeah, that might be there to kind of keep the frame rate up. Oh wow, I go all the way back to tank? Cool. So I can't even remember how many worlds there are, but there's a bunch of different... See, that's how you do a bat, right? The bat doesn't just like zoom in on you, and that's a reference to the last game I played, which is... Battle of Olympus, which I had a had a rough go through there, man. <laughs> That's... But enough, dude. I'm, I'm I'm done talking about that game. God. Oh, 
I like those little guys, they're cute. I also like the little sombrero guys. And the background art, right? That's so cool, right? There's Kitty, his girlfriend, and the I think the doctor, I don't know their name. This guy shoots like a little miniature version of himself out of his mouth. <laughs> The other reason this game has become really nice to me, really nice for me, is um, other than the great memory of it of my dad, um, is that I've I don't know <laughs> since I went away to college and after I got out of college I got my, I got a kitty cat and I've become an animal lover. I, I love cats. I really like dogs too, um, but you know I think people are going to be a little bit more one way or the other. I'm more of a cat person, but I do do like dogs, even though I generally get the reputation that for some reason I don't. I just don't have a big enough place for them. I wouldn't really be able to give them a good life, but yeah, you know, <laughs> I think I think it's a life worth living if you can share it with animals. There's, there's you know, of course, social communication with humans is important and all that stuff, and I understand, but if you can have a little animal in your life to take care of and to watch out for, that's man, that's super satisfying. So, you know, anytime you could play a game about a cat, that's, you know, not even the same thing at all, but somehow it gets linked in the brain. What? I can't go out that way? Oh, it's a one-way uh, one bag, kids. But this is a ridiculously easy game. So it's not something I play too much because it is so easy. Um, like, I don't know. It's why? Why would that be a problem? I mean, y you can just always pick it up and play it. Um, the levels are fun enough, but you just kind of breeze through them. There's no levels that really stand out for me in this game, though. That's the thing. Ring, ring, ring. You're doing well, Felix, but soon your game will be over. Click. I like how. Felix was obviously asleep when the phone call came in, right? Like, he had to turn the light on in the house. And he gets it after the fourth ring. Like, you think if your girlfriend's being held hostage, you're going to have, like, the cops waiting by the phone to, like, trace the call? No, not Felix, man. He's just sleeping. power-up zones. You can see, obviously, it took a lot from Mario, right? You know, like, the little bags are like the warp pipes and things like that. But, I mean, what, what didn't take from Mario, you know? Hell, every game I could think of in the 90s was trying in some ways to be the next Mario. Like, all platformers, I should say, at least. Like, an entire genre was chasing after the plumber. Like, an entire genre. So. But I do like the power-up system in this. I do find it unique. And I like that it changes depending upon which level you're at. Alright, so it's not always the tank. There's air levels. There will also be water levels coming up. I think there's a spaceship level. I don't know. I haven't played this in probably... When was I flying around the States? Would have been... 08, 09? So, yeah. Over a decade ago. But that was... Man, that was something. I... I didn't like it at the time. I really am not a guy who likes to travel very much. Just because... I don't know. I have some anxieties and... 
best way I've heard someone describe anxiety is just like a general lack of control and like a fear of that. And so when you're traveling, you know, you don't you don't know where you're going to go. You don't know what you're going to eat. It's not like you're either going to starve to death or you're going to get like, you know, steak surf and turf or something, you know. But, you know, it's not just it's just not in your control in the same way that it is at your home. And so I didn't like it. <laughs> But I'm glad I did it. I'm really glad I did it. I got to go out to Southern California a lot. I'd visit a buddy out there when uh, I'd have the company pay for a flight from Detroit to LAX, do like two days worth of work, and then spend a couple days with my buddy. Um, got to see my parents a bunch. They were also they're also in California, so they were in a sunny state. And. You know, I didn't expect to ever move to Europe, but now that I have, I'm glad that I saw all of the states, uh, you know, most of it. Like, I spent a lot of time on the road during those years, and I know what Florida looks like. I know what Texas looks like. I know what um, New York looks like. I know what Virginia looks like. I know what Vermont looks like. Like, I know what Colorado, Wyoming, all of that stuff, you know, and... Um, it wasn't by choice, and I wouldn't have done it any other re any other way, but I do know what the U.S. looks like, and I'm grateful for that, because when you're out here in Europe, you kind of, you know, you're always thinking, what are you missing out on? I could never figure out what the airplane was shooting out, man. It looks like he's just shooting some kind of, like, fried egg that's, like, rotating really fast. Like, I don't know what that's supposed to be. A ninja star? I think one of the coolest places I ever went to in the States was uh, one time I got to go to Vermont. Oh, crap. In, uh, in the fall. And if you guys get an opportunity, man, head out to Vermont in the fall. When the, when the leaves are changing colors? I mean, I'm sure that's some, somewhat of a cliche, but that was just incredible. So Vermont was, at least the part I was in, was pretty mountainous. And, uh, crap. I'm just being, I'm just going through it fast. <laughs> you know, just going through it fast, guys. Um, and I can't remember where it was exactly, but I shouldn't say it's mountainous. It was hilly. And uh, I'd get, I got into this one new little valley. And I remember there was just this really tall tower. I don't know if it was a smokestack or what it was. Oh, this is... I don't have so much vertical control over him. I can go up real fast, but my down speed is pretty clocked. Um, and yeah, I remember just like, came into this one valley and... Man, there's this just beautiful tower in the middle of it, and all the leaves were in all these really beautiful colors. It was, oh, it was impressive. It was really, really cool. So yeah, that's that's a place I recommend. And the people in Vermont were friendly. Man, they were friendly. But most everywhere I went, people were friendly. I never really had problems with anyone anywhere. I was also in New Hampshire. And I couldn't believe it. We were we went out to eat at a restaurant and there was no tax. It just blew me away. <laughs> like, yeah, there's no tax. Fourteen thirty-eight. That's what you owe me. Like, what about tip? Oh yeah, yeah you can tip. <laughs> okay. Pretty sure the water is a one-hit kill. In some ways, I like the car better. It, you know, I like I like honking bitches, um, especially birds in the butt. Like you get right behind the bird and you just honk them in the in the butt. Here, I'll show you again. Watch. Right in the butt. Hank. Um. Yeah, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> What the heck is that? 
That is a weird sprite, huh? Is that supposed to be an octopus? I guess that must be an octopus. Some cephalopod, right? I like that you can charge up the shot of the tank. But it is a little hard to to aim. And there was a Game Boy version of this game too. Which which is strange to think about. So somehow when I think back on the chronology of, you know, the 90s, the Game Boy came out at the same time as, well, it came out a little later than the NES, a couple of years for sure. But, um, you know, it was in a lot of ways kind of a watered down NES, I, I would have said. Like the Game Boy Color was basically a portable NES. And, um, yeah, a game coming out in the Game Boy in 92 would have just been like getting going for the system. But um, 92 for the NES would have been near the end of its the end of its ride. I like that Felix instantly goes to sleep if you don't um, if you're not paddling. That's just that's just his thing. Like boats make him sleepy. And I'm sure that um, dolphin I'm riding on doesn't look so disgusting if we were on a CRT or something where, you know, there would be some dithering between the colors. But, wow, it makes it look like Felix is riding on a poor dolphin with a skin disorder. I'm really curious what the next level of power-up is. I can't remember. Is there something beyond the dolphin? I don't remember. Oh, this should probably give it to us if there is. Nope. Dolphin's max power. Oh, I like the little dolphin icon in the upper left-hand corner next to the hearts. So cute! So what do you guys think, man? Is this something you'd play? I mean, I don't know. I'm starting to feel kind of like it is getting pretty dated. <laughs> um, it's not a classic platformer by any means, but I think if you're in the market for a platformer on the NES and something you probably haven't played before, this, this won't... You could do much worse than this. This is... This might surprise you, you know? I think if you never heard of this game, or you'd look at this, you'd be like, okay, that's just some licensed property garbage from the 8-bit Nintendo days, you know? That's going to be like some LJN nonsense, but no, this is a Hudson Soft, so they made some quality stuff back then. But I wonder why this didn't make it to the uh, to the TurboGrafx um, TurboGrafx 16 because that would have been a Hudson thing. So I'm sure they probably bought the license to Felix. And as far as I know, this game has never been re-released, which is why I'm sure it, I'm sure that's part of the reason why it has so much value online. That it was a late game, limited production, and. Uh, can't be re-released because it's a licensed property so i'm sure all that factors in and plus you know it's a much better game than it has any business being i think 14 lives is enough what do you guys think don't have to chase everything huh okay i can't get down there <laughs>
Take that. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at the animation on the turtle puking out bubbles, huh? It's pretty good. Head comes out, pukes a bubble. I'm sure it's like Mario and Yoshi, right? Where Felix is really just punching him in the back of the head. <laughs> I still can't believe that's the truth. I, I, that, that just feels like an April Fool's j joke. But yeah, everything I've read indicates that in Super Mario World... The, the designers intended for Mario to be punching Yoshi in the back of the head um, in order to get him to stick his tongue out. This thing's so weird. Oh my... Oh. Stupid. The, the cat submarine shoots out little jellyfish as a weapon. That's all you're going to do? Oh. oh no, I got to fight him at base level? Okay, well, that's what I get for being all cavalier. Shoot. There's just not much of a reach on that uh, bag. Okay, good. I can power up to turtle at least. I can go full turtle on him. Okay. That sucks. Shoot. Homeboy's a little more tricky than I thought. He's crafty. Where's the heart? I thought there was a power-up. Is it like... I guess I don't know. Maybe it's based off of like... Every ten or something is a... Come on! Wow, I was breezing through this game. There we go. gets another phone call. Oh, he's happy about something. Ring! Ring! Oh, the light failed. Look at his old-timey radio. I'm getting mad, Felix. I can't control myself anymore. Click. Well, kiddos, I think we'll wrap up this video here. I will finish this in the next one. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, let me know, what do you think? Yeah, if you're in the mood for an old 8-bit platformer, w would you try this now? Have you tried this? You know. All right, guys, have yourself a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.